Okay, for this video, I am going to try to make the case for my controversial stand, which is that I happen to believe as a midterm rental host, meaning you are renting for 30 days or more furnished, that you are more protected on Airbnb than you are on any other platform. And added to that, I would argue you are more protected on Airbnb's platform as a rental host than you are on any other platform, including Zillow, including Avail, and the other ones. And I will explain that it all has to do with air cover. So my hope with this video is that I both educate you around what air cover is and also make the case for you as far as why you're protected. As a side note, I am not paid by Airbnb. I would love to be paid by Airbnb, but I'm not. I just think it's a really good product and I think it's helped us stay rented, which is why I make a lot of content about renting month to month on Airbnb. Additionally, I will talk to you about what Airbnb does not cover just so that you're aware of it. I'm not sure that I think it's that big of a deal, but it's always good to know before you start something what the end game is. That way there's no unpleasant surprises. I also say this when you're doing a rental, if you don't have a perfect space, so for instance, if you don't have a washer and dryer on site or you don't have parking on site, it is not that big of a deal, but when it becomes a big deal is when you're surprised. So hopefully this content will help stave off any surprises that you have around Airbnb or the Airbnb insurance product aka air cover and then you can make an educated decision about whether or not you want to use that product and if you feel comfortable. Okay so what is air cover? Air cover is a product that exists inside Airbnb and you don't have to opt into it. Whether you are a host or you're a guest you're automatically enrolled in air cover and air cover is meant to protect you in the absence of having a lease or a deposit. So as the host you don't put a lease in Airbnb and you don't put a deposit in Airbnb. One caveat on that, Airbnb does allow you to put a lease in the house rules, but I strongly discourage my consulting clients from doing that when this comes up because my fear is, is that if you have a lease in Airbnb, it's going to negate air cover. So everything that I'm about to talk about, you might not have access to if that lease is there. And the reason why I believe that is because I think Airbnb will point you toward the lease if there's an issue, whereas if the lease doesn't exist, then you have access to air cover. So back to air cover. Air cover exists inside Airbnb. You don't have to do anything to be part of that product. It's just the insurance that covers you and it substitutes both the lease and also the deposit. So in Airbnb, you don't take a deposit against guests because the idea is if something goes wrong, you issue the claim with Airbnb and not the guest. So Airbnb will pay you out. And this is really the main reason why I think you are much more protected in Airbnb than you are on any of the other platforms. So on the other platforms, Furnish Finder, Zillow, etc., you are going to take a lease and a deposit. But the reality is you're pretty much limited to that deposit. And what I mean by that is even though you have a lease on someone and that's a legal document, in most circumstances, it's not going to be worth your while to go find that tenant after they have left pursue them in court and try and get money out of them. They may or may not have the money, but after you've pursued them, you have lost a lot of money and time, so much so that it's probably not worth it for you. Whereas if you put a claim in through Airbnb, Airbnb absolutely has the money to refund you. So that is the first point I will make is that you are more protected in Airbnb and that is because of this air cover. So in the absence of a lease or a deposit, you have this air cover product that's going to protect you. And the benefit of this product is that if someone has damaged your property beyond what the deposit has you covered for, you don't have to then go and pursue them. You can file with Airbnb and they will reimburse you. Hey guys, this is the part where I ask you for likes and subscribes. If you feel like you are learning something from this video or you know more about air cover than you did when you started, please like this video. And if you want more content like this, subscribe and you'll always know when new videos are coming out. If you are looking for books on midterm rentals, I have three, they're available on Amazon. This book talks about all the different tenant types that would need your property. So in addition to traveling nurses, it also talks about the different demographics that would need your place. It also has checklists and interviews with other landlord hosts and renters in the midterm space. This book is just a straight up guide with tips and tricks on how to do midterm rentals, as well as call outs and tables around pricing and other information that you need to have a successful midterm rental. And this is sort of like a landlord's Bible for the midterm space. It's the book I wish I had 
had when I started. That said, I hesitate to say that because I always feel like people new to this space feel like they have to do all this education or they're going to do it wrong. I don't believe that. I think experience is the best teacher. Nevertheless, that was not much of a sale for this book. Nevertheless, this book talks about what an average tenant looks like in the United States so that you can compare people that are coming in. It also has exercises for how to protect yourself when you are vetting tenants across the different platforms. A little bit of education on rental discrimination laws. It's the book I wish I had had when we started. And if none of these books do anything for you and you're not interested in that, you just wanna get straight to it, I offer consulting at the one hour, two hour, six hour level. I also offer just a straight up listing build. So I will build out your listing. And then if you want coaching on that, you can couple it with one of the other packages. Just email me. My email is on the screen. All right, let's get back to it. So how much does air cover cost? Well, Airbnb will tell you air cover is free. That is sort of true in the sense that you never knew a world where you didn't pay 3% to Airbnb to have air cover because it's not it's not optional, you have to be part of it. You're mandated in and Airbnb will always take 3% or as of this date, they've always taken 3% of the host sales. So if you make a hundred bucks, you're gonna get 97, Airbnb is gonna get three. The reason why they take that $3 is because it goes toward that fund that also pays for Airbnb as the platform to exist. I am totally fine with Airbnb taking this 3% because I've always run the business with Airbnb taking their 3%. For people that have a preference for being on other sites because they don't wanna pay this 3% to Airbnb and the other sites are cheaper, that is true. I primarily talk about Zillow and Furnish Finder. Furnish Finder is a one-time fee, one-time annual fee, and then Zillow is free to you as the host unless you want the premium product. And even the premium product is significantly cheaper. It's 30 dollars for three months I want to say where whereas Airbnb is going to take three percent of all your sales I really don't care about this because as I am more worried about vacancies and vacancies will quickly eclipse the cost of paying this three percent out so I've changed on this I used to feel differently about it and I used to be like the fee is so expensive if you look at one of my books it mentions that like hey this is too expensive these other platforms are better I have just changed my thoughts on this as more and more of my guests have come out of Airbnb B&B. Second to that, I am noticing, because I co-host for a lot of my consulting clients, when I build their listing, I also help them get their first tenant. And so I am seeing more and more people asking, hey, can we cut Airbnb out? And I tell them no. And the reason for that is because I don't want Airbnb to get mad. I don't want the algorithm to flag me as someone that's cutting them out. The other issue with that is that you just don't have this Airbnb coverage, this air cover, if something happens. And if something happens, you're going to want this air cover. So let's get to question number three, which is what does air cover protect or how are you protected with air cover? So there's two items that you really care about and they're different. So air cover has up to 3 million in coverage for art and valuables. So this would be your personal property, anything that happens to the house anything valuable you have in the house. So you can get up to 3 million back on that. And so for most of us, that will be more than sufficient. The other part of it is a million in personal liability, meaning if someone were to fall down, break their leg, um, let's just leave it at that. They fall down and they break their leg. You are covered up to a million dollars if someone sues you because it's an issue within your property. So those are the main items that you care about. I really care more about the personal property. Not that I don't care about the liability, but on the personal property side, it is interesting because they will cover you if there's any kind of pet damage, any kind of damage in general, but including pet damage comes in and they're very dirty in the place or there's a fire that gets smoke on the walls or something. Airbnb will help pay for a deeper clean or any kind of clean cleaning service to get your property back to where it needs to be. And then finally, another piece of this air cover that I really like and really appeals to me as a host is that they will cover you for lost income. Now, this doesn't count if it's like an environmental disaster, but it does count if a tenant does it. So if a tenant came in, left something on the stove, it burns, and you're out of commission for a while because you need to get the kitchen back up to speed. I'm only mentioning this because it happened to one of my friends. I was not their consultant. I'm a friend of theirs and it happened to their property in Hawaii. That's why this example is top of mind. Anyway, if there is a fire in the kitchen or something that disables the kitchen or the property and you have downtime, Airbnb, air cover will also pay for lost income. Question number four, does air cover substitute for your regular insurance? 
Not really. I'm going to say hard no here. Air cover comes in when it is a tenant that rented through Airbnb that damages your place. That's when it's relevant and Airbnb may still direct you toward your insurance first before they pay it out. I don't want that to count against Airbnb. It's just they want you to go to your insurance first and in the midterm space especially, there are some major gaps for insurance. So if your insurance will not take you, then you go to air cover. You are not covered if the tenant comes from any other platform and it is just a best practice and will offer you the most security if you have a secondary insurance product on your place. As a side note, if you took a loan to acquire your property and that loan isn't paid off, regardless of whether it's your primary or it's an investment property, you're going to have to carry insurance. Cover is not a substitute for insurance, but it is a robust product within Airbnb that will protect you for insurance type events. Our final question around what air cover does and how the host is protected with air cover before we get into what air cover does not protect you against. Um, the fifth question is, what is the process for air cover? So the process for air cover is, let's say you rent it out to someone on Airbnb, they have left, you go in and you discover that your couch is destroyed. Your first thing that you should do is ask the tenant that just left, so the guest that just left through Airbnb to cover that damage. Assuming you don't hear back from them and or they refuse, you go to the help center and you go to the air cover section. There you will see an option to fill out a claim. You fill out your claim form and you submit any proof for the claim. So photos of the couch before and after. After you've submitted your claim, someone from Airbnb will then reach out to you. Unless you have 14 days from the time the guest checks out to submit that claim. As we get toward the end, if you did not give me a like before, if you have made it this far and you feel like you've learned something, if you weren't convinced before, if you're convinced now, I would appreciate a like. Okay, so final section, what doesn't air cover cover? How are you not protected in air cover? So this is specific for midterm rentals. It's also relevant to other spaces too, but basically there's no recourse in this if someone stays for longer than 30 days. So when you have a lease and someone has overstayed their welcome, they have stayed past the date they were supposed to leave, you're gonna point back to that lease to start the eviction proceedings. Air cover is no part of that. Now, there's an idea that the contract or the agreement that you have with the tenant through Airbnb is a contract of sorts, and so you would point back to that, but I think it may be different from state to state, and this is the one gap where I'm seeing in Airbnb's coverage is even though I think for the most part you're okay in the midterm space, there are nightmare stories, there are exceptions to every rule where people stay longer. Um, typically, midterm tenants don't do that because they have somewhere else they need to get back to. Same thing with short-term tenants. They're coming in for a visit. Uh, the likelihood of someone outstaying their welcome is much less likely in this scenario, I think, than for a long-term unfurnished rental. So like if they come in for six months or a year, I think that's a different story because they get very comfortable. They think of that property as theirs and so they might continue that stay. Whereas people in the short-term and mid-term space, it's just a stopover onto something else in their life. So I don't think this is an issue most of the time in mid-term rentals. That said, air cover doesn't provide you any protection. If you felt like this video was helpful, I have a guide on Airbnb month-to-month -month rentals and I will direct you to it here. Also, this video talks about my favorite website for finding midterm rentals, hint, hint. Talk about the breakdown of different tenant types that I have had through this magical website. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching this video and happy 2024.